Beautiful book. Um, well, thank you very much. Yeah. But uh, the picture, the, the the company that does this, it's called Universe, but it has that's just a coincidence. Um, it's Rizzoli, basically. They do art books, and so they do a spectacular job of, of photos and, and print. Um, changing the subject just a little bit, then then we'll go on. I, I do want to riff on something that you mentioned, which was the overnight success, like John Hamm. Yes. Uh, and you can you can look at every successful actor and see that they started. Yeah. They, they paid their dues. They started. Um, I, I, I am here presenting myself as the unsuccessful actor who started a very long time ago. Um, I came to California to be an actor um, and did it for a while and then got into writing and uh, found out that was a little bit better proposition perhaps and only recently have kind of gotten back into a series of not unfortunate but peculiar events. Um, my buddy Caleb Garcia and I worked an episode of Vegas uh, earlier this year. I play a Chicago mobster. Uh, hey, you know, hey. But uh, the point is when, when your financial plan B becomes acting, you know you're in trouble. But the reason I bring all of this up, because I don't always admit it in public, is when I came to California uh, in 1979 to become an actor, just in time for the actor's strike, um, <laughs> <laughs> the very first thing I did, I, I got hired just out of the blue. I don't even remember who called and why, but uh, I got hired to do a television picture called Eleanor, First Lady of the World, about Eleanor Roosevelt. Starred Gene Stapleton as Eleanor Roosevelt, E.G. Marshall as John Foster Dulles. I played E.G.'s aide, so I'm puppy-dogging around behind him basically throughout the whole thing. Had a nice scene with E.G., just sat there and smiled, basically, and agreed with everything he said for the most part. Um, had a fantastic cast, Coral Brown, whom I had already met because I did a play with her husband, Vincent Price, a few years earlier. Um, a, a wonderful actor named Kabir Bedi, who became a James Bond villain. Um, and uh, there was also a very lovely, very beautiful and wonderful actress in that picture named Arlene Martell. <laughs> Thank you. And we have not seen each other since. <laughs> wow. But I remembered her very, very vividly. Uh, and I actually thought you were Indian. Well, I started to think so, too. Because she had this beautiful <laughs> wig and, and the sari and the makeup and everything. It was... Uh, I have a funny story that goes with Well, that. I'm going to hand it right over to you, <laughs> and you can, uh, uh, you can tell the story. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, I was living in Carmel... Clint Eastwood was the mayor, <laughs> and I just said, I can't be bound to L.A. because I'm living 10 minutes away from the studio and nobody's calling, so I moved to Carmel. I get a call from uh, the director, John Herman. John Herman. Rather a tartar, as I recall. Yeah. He had directed me in My Favorite Martian. <laughs> he said, what are you doing in Carmel so far, 350 miles? I said, I'm enjoying life up here. What are you doing? He said, well, I want you to come down here. We can't find an actress who can do a Pakistani accent, or we have the accent, but they can't act. You can do both. So I said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Always admit to everything, right? right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You, you flamenco dance, of course. Of course I yeah. do, I do, on tables. So I have a coach in four? No problem. <laughs> right, which I did, I'll tell you that. Okay. <laughs> flamenco story for One Eye Jacks. Oh, wow. Uh, it was say? an excellent script. A good movie, a very good movie. Yes. My, my part was barely there, but... Uh, but I, I do still remember it. And there was another accent. Uh, Freddie Jones was in it as well, doing a Russian accent, which was, which was quite, the, quite something to behold. <laughs> well, what was funny on the set for me is I really got into the Pakistan makeup and had the uh, show, all of it. And when the day was over, I take it off. Now, I had blonde hair at the time, if you can imagine, because when I'm blonde, is that? I can't imagine you with dark hair. You're such a blonde. When I'm dark, they say, I can't imagine you as a blonde. You're so <laughs> obviously not a blonde. But that's how it's been. 
so when it was over they didn't know it was the same person